talking about it now for a couple of days, where when you're given a forecast, it's actually a distribution of possible outcomes. Mm -hmm. It's not one, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of opportunity for other things to happen. For example, in New York City, if you look at the probabilities of certain snowfall amounts, mm -hmm. for example, down here, we are weighting them based on what the science tells us. So there is actually a better than even chance of New York getting over eight inches, but there is also some chance of them, right, not uh -huh. a small one either, of them getting over a foot. So if they get over a foot, actually, it's not a bad forecast if we communicate it that way. Mm -hmm. If you just say you're going to get eight inches and then you get a foot, then the forecaster looks bad. That's not science. The science tells us that, you know what, there is some chance, and here's what it is. You've got to be transparent about it, and we're trying to do that here. Right. And when you're talking the difference of, say, like six inches or a foot, foot. six inches you can get back, you know, into your normal routine fairly quickly versus yeah. a foot, which is a little bit more recovery time. Right. So it's important to kind of weigh that. And yeah. The probability goes down, too, when you're looking at such higher amounts. Speaking of those higher amounts, if you want to go over two feet, yeah, likely New York is not going to see that, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a chance. 5%, and I think it's important for us to give that information Absolutely. out, to show it all. Take it all, and then you can deal with it however you want. Uh, but also notice that, you know, with 55% greater than 8, that means there's a 45% chance of that being less than 8 as well. Right. So you got to take in both, both sides, sides the whole curve that we're giving you. And uh, let's do that then. So when we uh, sort of try to account for it, here's our most likely estimate for the amount of snow. Again, there are probabilities attached to each one of these numbers. But this is what we think is the most likely outcome for all of them. And in New York, it looks like we're in the 5 to 8 inch range there. Mm -hmm. And then... 8 to 12, right on the edge there. Actually, Southern New York State, 5 to 8. New York City, probably closer to the 8 to 12. And then there's the 12 to 18. And, of course, the big winners in terms of snowfall or losers in terms of impacts, because it could be really devastating, are areas farther southwest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so impressive, the sign of times and how things have changed, that early on this week, everybody was so confident that this area was actually going to be bullseye for parts of D.C. and Virginia. I mean, that's a big change. Yeah, it is. And, you know, in one sense, you do see it that way. But in another sense, I mean, the models were kind of telling us a while back that there was going to be a significant snowstorm for kind of that area. So hands off to the models on this one mm -hmm. for clustering on that idea, Early. giving all of us some confidence in what we're saying. I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit because I want to point out cities like Boston, which yeah. are on the lower end of the snow. But I yeah. noticed that we have them in our power outage map as well as a heads up because the wind mm -hmm. is going to be an issue for the Cape and parts of New England. You're exactly right. There's going to be a corridor of very strong winds from about Boston on south or through central and southern New Jersey uh, that really begins to crank up tomorrow as that secondary development takes place off the coast of South Carolina initially, probably tonight. That's going to be the primary storm that moves up the coast. We're going to have to watch that closely, exactly its track, but also how intense it gets because if it gets a little bit strong, Longer, some of those forecast winds and maybe some of those forecasts for coastal flooding could get higher as well. So we have to watch that. That storm development has not yet taken place, mm -hmm. but that's going to be the one to watch in just a matter of hours. Yeah, we still got to get that upper low to catch up with that surface yes, low, too. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll talk more about the coastal low impact and the severe threat as well.